Hello and welcome to the Network Direction video channel. What you found here is the start of a new group of videos designed to help you understand the foundations of networking. If you're new to networking or studying for a certification like CCNA, Network Plus or JNCIA, this is a great place to start. For the first few videos, I'm going to assume that you have no networking experience. My goal is to create a solid foundation for you to build on. In this video, we're going to start with understanding what a network actually is, and some of the network types you'll see. We'll follow up in part 2 with a look at how a network may be cabled, and get an overview of addresses. If you like this video, please let me know with the like button. It's important to me to know if I'm on the right track with my videos, so a comment would be helpful too. If you want to see more, please use the subscribe and notification buttons. Now, if you're ready, let's start right at the beginning. What is a network? So maybe you already know what a network is. Maybe you've built your own network at home, or helped someone to run the network at school or at your job. That's okay. I don't want to bore you, so if this applies to you, I would like to give you this challenge. Pause the video and think of a good description of what a network is. If you've come up with something you're happy with, well done. Feel free to skip ahead. Otherwise, stay with me and I'll see if I can come up with something for you. At work or home, you have a bunch of devices. Computers, printers, TVs and so on. You connect these by means of a network. When the devices are connected, they're able to share data. This could be sending a print job to a printer, sending an email, or streaming video. This can also be used for sharing an internet connection. Mostly, network users are unaware of the network they're using. As long as they can browse the internet, do their job, browse YouTube, they're usually fine. For all of these devices to communicate, they need to be connected together somehow. One way is to plug cables into the devices, and connect them to another device called a switch. An example is in a school's computer lab. In this case, a computer in the lab connects to a wall socket with a cable. Another cable runs through the wall, which comes out at a patch panel. This may be in a cabinet on the wall somewhere in the room, or in another room entirely. The port on the patch panel then connects to the switch. You might have a switch at home too. Most homes don't have wall sockets, so devices are connected directly to the switch. We'll talk more about how switches work later. We can also connect devices wirelessly. A common way to do this is to use a wireless access point. A wireless network like this is also called Wi-Fi. An example of this is if you have a tablet. It is impractical to cable it in, so wireless is a good option. The access point is like a switch without cables. More than one device can connect to the access point at a time, but without the messy cabling. The access point can also be connected to the switch with a cable. This way, wired and wireless devices can all be part of the same network. Having both wired switches and wireless access points gives you more connection options. Imagine you have a laptop in an office. You may connect it to the network with a cable when you're at your desk. When you have a meeting in the conference room, you remove the cable and connect to Wi-Fi. Whether wired or wireless, the goal of the network is to move information from one device to another. For this to work, the sender and the receiver must understand each other. They need to speak the same language. In the network, speaking the same language means that devices agree on how data is sent, received, organised and handled. Basically, they agree on a process that they all follow. It's a bit like filling out paperwork. This is called a protocol. A lot of different protocols are used, depending on what's needed at the time. Network software and hardware are designed with these protocols in mind. You will hear of protocols like Ethernet and TCP, which are used for sending and receiving data. You may also hear of protocols like HTTP, which is used for accessing the web and SMTP, which is used for email. 
Usually, several protocols are used together to achieve a task. We'll look at protocols further in future videos. In summary, networks are used to connect devices together. Devices use the network to communicate and to share information. To share information, devices need to speak the same language. This language is called a protocol, which is a set of instructions of how to handle the information. We're going to start with some simple questions to get the brain working. Firstly, what are the two ways computers can connect to the network? To follow on from that, what devices do they usually connect to? And finally, how many protocols are used when one computer accesses another computer? When you're ready to see the answers, follow the link at the bottom of the screen. Networks connect devices. You could call devices on the network nodes. Nodes may include devices that help control the traffic flowing through a network, like switches and routers. Nodes also include endpoints or hosts. These are devices that send and receive the bulk of the traffic. This includes workstations, servers, printers, and so on. Networks come in different sizes. A network at home is an example of a small network. These networks usually only have a few nodes. This is called a SOHO network. SOHO means small office home office. These networks typically have a couple of computers, a printer, a few phones and tablets. Some devices will be wireless and some are connected to a switch. This might be a good time to mention that people often say hub when they mean switch. You can see why, of course, as the switch looks like a central hub in a SOHO network. But please keep in mind that switches and hubs are very different things. Hubs are really old technology that you generally don't see anymore outside of a museum. While switches are modern and commonly used, they look very similar, so it's easy to mix them up. Have a look at the model number to see if it gives you any clues about what the device really is. In a SOHO network, a router is used to connect to the internet. You might find that the router, switch, and access point are all integrated into one device. While a SOHO network will only have a few devices, a corporation, for example, a bank, will have many devices. This is called an enterprise network. The enterprise network may cover several floors in a building. They may also have several office buildings in different cities or even across different countries. An internet provider has a very large network. This is called a service provider network. Not only do they provide internet access, they also offer services to connect their customers together. Consider the bank with offices all around the country. The service provider uses part of their network to join these offices together. When devices are collected into a local area, we call this a local area network, or LAN. The LAN may be a small network. In a SOHO network, the LAN is the switch with the handful of devices connected. Or the LAN may be part of a bigger network, like an enterprise network. This network may have many switches, routers and access points, depending on their needs. Think of the bank from before. They have an office with several floors. You could consider the whole building as a LAN. Or, more likely, the network is broken up into smaller parts. Perhaps there is a separate network on each floor. Each of these could also be called a LAN. These separate LANs may be connected together, but we'll talk more about that later. But a bank's network is going to be larger than just one building. Banks have offices all over the country and all over the world. Even though they are far apart, these networks can be joined together. This is called a WAN, or Wide Area Network. Imagine for a moment that you work for a company with an office in Sydney and an office in Melbourne. You could contact a service provider and they can connect these offices for you. WANs are a topic all of their own, so we'll cover them in detail in a later video. 
Let's take a moment for a quick summary. All networks are different, and this includes their size. A Soho network is very small, while an enterprise network may be very large. Of course, your network could fit in anywhere in between. A LAN or local area network is a collection of network devices in a local area, like a single building. A WAN or wide area network connects networks that are far apart. And once again, it's time to get the brain working. Here's something to think about. You work for a company that has a finance division, an engineering division, and an admin division. Each group have their own network, and the networks are joined together. Is this network still a LAN, or is it something else entirely? The company grows and adds a retail division. In addition to the head office, there is now six branch offices. What type of network is this? As before, go to the link below to see the answers. I hope you've enjoyed part one of this series. Join me in part two, where we'll have a look at different types of cabling, the Ethernet protocol, and a bit of an introduction into network addressing. If you found this helpful, subscribe and click the notification button. Also, if you liked it, please click the like button and tell me what you thought in the comments.